Hey everybody, it's your girl Tara Michelle. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Opinionated Scents, our safe space to discuss all things fragrance, whether we like them or not. Today, I'm coming back through <laughs> with my follow-up video for the Mon Guerlain Sparkling Bouquet Flanker. I have so much to say, and this is going to be so in-depth that we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. So let's just start off with a little brief explanation of where I would put it in terms of the flankers. I do want to start off by saying I sold the Bloom of Rose EDT because I didn't care for it. Too sporty, too soapy with the lavender. It just didn't mix well for me. But this is the Bloom of Rose EDP. Beautiful, realistic rose petal fragrance. This could have been its own standalone fragrance. I do not understand the need for this to be a flanker of Mon Guerlain. Beautiful fragrance. And I'm, I, I love this fragrance. So I'm not going to talk about this one in this video because it has absolutely nothing to do with any of the rest of these. <laughs> Starting off with the original Eau de Parfum, I know that all of these have similar notes. You know, you have some deviations here where there might be one with licorice, one without. Um, but they all seem to, almost all of them, seem to open up with like bergamot, lavender, jasmine, and have some type of either Tahitian vanilla or Madagascan vanilla, something like that. But I'm only going to be talking to you about what I smell, not necessarily what's supposed to be in it. Because in this one, the bergamot is not the star, yet it's supposed to be one of the top notes. When you have a good nose, you can tell that it's there and it does serve a purpose. I think it keeps the lavender from being just way too much like it is in YSL's Lieb. That is just a terrible, terrible, terrible perfume. But for this one, I get the lavender, the vanilla, and the jasmine. That is what this perfume is for me. The licorice is very light in this. The Intense has a way more prominent licorice note, but this one, smooth, warm, sensual, inviting. Okay, so now that we have talked about the focal point, the starting point, the Eau de Parfum, I'm now going to explain to you, going to the right and to the left, how the flankers start to deviate in their own DNA from the original. So, let's talk about Eau Sensuelle. This one is a little deeper, a little darker, a little sexier. So if the EDP for you was a little too feminine, then this one is going to kick in and give you a much more sexual version. So I think the EDP is sensual. I think this one is when you know what you have in mind, when you're putting on your dress and your heels and you're going to get it. You know, you're not still thinking about whether or not you're interested. You're definitely interested. And this one almost mimics the notes of the other parfum identically, but is that a word, identically? Why does that feel like that's not, I make up words anyway, so whatever, you know what I'm talking about. It's almost identical to uh, the other parfum, but then we deviate because I believe the coumarin leaves this, I believe there's rose in it, um, and then there is tonka bean, okay? So... There's just a little bit more richness, you know, to it. And I absolutely love it. However, I will say that I don't think you need the EDP and this one. I think that they are so similar that you either know what vibe you want. You want an everyday work appropriate scent for fall and winter, then I would go with the EDP. If you want something more specific to date night to or trying to attract attention, definitely this one. Moving along further to the right, these are the fragrances that become deeper, darker, more intense. We're going to talk about Mon Guerlain Intense. Beautiful fragrance, still has the lavender, the jasmine, the iris, the bergamot, the mandarin orange, all of those key things that are in almost all of these. But where this deviates is it has both vanillas. So it has the Tahitian vanilla and the Madagascan vanilla. And then there's also the addition of white musk. This one comes across like a powder bomb to me with a little bit of spice. It's so pretty, it's so good. It's the perfect 
winter fragrance. This is when I usually wear this is in the winter. So this one is, you know, and more heavy on the vanilla, less so on the jasmine and the lavender. And the white musk adds a little kick with that benzoin and licorice. It just comes across. Um, this is so good. This is the definition of a true flanker. Something that takes the original DNA and skyrockets in a totally different direction with it, but still keeps you based at home, anchored at home. So you know it's a monger line. It's just that it does not mimic or smell identical to the Eau de Parfum. Now let's start back at the Eau de Parfum, and we're going to move to the left. We're going to talk about fragrances that have the DNA, but start moving in a lighter direction. We're going to start off with Floral. Oh, I love this one. This one has the notes, you know, again, we're going to stay true to the jasmine and the lavender and the vanilla. However, this one just has plain vanilla. It doesn't say Tahitian or Madagascan. And it also has the addition of peach, neroli, and sandalwood. And also, of course, floral notes. So this one is a, a lighter version. It's fresher, it's more spring, more summer, of course. Um, I can wear this all year round. This is just a beautiful, and again, this is true to a flanker. You have yourself anchored in the original DNA, only it's much, much lighter, but you still smell it. And then you get to add the floral notes and you get to add some fruits. Neroli and peach are beautiful in this. They're not prominent star players, very far down on the list, I think in the mid or either um, at the base. But what they do for this is still exquisite. So this is the one that I would say is closest to it, but on a lighter floral fruity version. Now let's briefly, really quickly talk about the star of this video. We're going to talk about the new sparkling bouquet. So I'm going to read the notes first. The top notes, pear, bergamot, and mandarin orange. Middle notes, peony, lavender, and jasmine sandbox. Base notes are Tahitian vanilla, white musk, and sandalwood. So you have the white musk from the intense version. Of course, we have the Tahitian vanilla and the lavender from almost all of them. The jasmine, the bergamot, the mandarin orange. Where we differ at here is with the pear and the peony. There's also sandalwood in here, and sandalwood is from the um, floral. So I told you guys, this is dipping a little bit into almost all of the flankers with um, the notes. I just don't believe that there's peony or pear in any of the others. We'll get back to this one. Last but not least, in moving to the left, that means getting further away from the original smell of the or the parfum DNA, we're going to talk about the EDT. A much fresher, cleaner, citrus burst version. And it's because it, it deviates. Now, it does have the lavender, the jasmine, the bergamot, the mandarin orange, the vanilla. Of course, that's in all of them. However, this one has the addition of orange blossom, ylang ylang, caramel, orris. And it just takes it in a, on a different path. This is so pretty. This is the perfect one for summer, in my opinion. Guys, whew, okay, the reason I'm doing this video as soon as I am, instead of taking more time with it, is because I think I hit a roadblock, and I know that a lot of you want answers about what it did on my skin. So let's just go ahead and get right into that part. I'm gonna go ahead and spray it again. Atomizer stunning, but all of them are, so. In the air, I'm immediately getting a perfect blend of the other parfum and floral. Like if they had a baby, this would totally be that. And it smells better every time I wear it, I will say that. I think I'm starting to get used to it and get acclimated with it. It's really pretty, which I've always said. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm just a sucker for the lavender jasmine combination in this perfume and the vanilla, of course. Yum. -y. Okay, so here's the thing. This one has the worst longevity out of all of them, the worst projection out of all of them to date. However, guys, I figured something out. So let's start from the beginning. 
I purchased this Thursday film for you guys on the stick. Couldn't make heads or tails of it other than it's pretty. So I took a shower, wore it to bed, got up in the morning, couldn't smell it anymore. I had put it on both pulse points in between my arms. I had put it on each wrist and sprayed a little bit, just a little small uh, spray on my, my t-shirt and went to bed. Got up in the morning, there was nothing there. Now, I sleep with my window open and my fan on and it was like 46 degrees outside. So Friday, I get up and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go work out. So I spray some more on full, full. I'm just gonna go walk around the lake, you know, come back home, do like 10, 15 minutes of some, you know, some weights. And by the time I got up to the, the lake, the little park by my house, I literally couldn't smell anything. And I had put like eight sprays on. And I was just like, you know what, it's fine. I didn't wanna go too heavy because I didn't know what the insects were gonna be like that time of morning. You guys know me. I don't. I don't do bugs. So um, I was like, you know what? This is a dud. I'm really irritated with this. Is it pretty? Yes, but it is kind of redundant. It's kind of pointless. If I already own the EDP and the Floral and the EDT, I don't need this. I don't need some, you know, concoction of those three. So I walk around the lake. I get back into the car, and I'm like, wow, that smells amazing. I smell my pulse points. It was on fire. Like the peony and the pear. Oh my God. So instantly I go, this is for the spring and the summer. This is not for these 40 degree days here in the Midwest. Okay, we're on to something. I come home, finish my workout, hop in the shower, put it back on. I'm going and I'm running errands. True to form, I'm going to the meat market. I'm going grocery shopping. I can't smell anything 30 minutes after I put it on. Again, it's in the 40s. I'm not doing anything where I'm sweating or I'm hot or I'm heat activating it. And I was like, wow. So, you know, we got to try it again tonight. Same thing. When my body temperature rises and I'm hot or I'm sweating, this is performing at a level where I would have loved it right off the bat if it would have done that at first spray, at first wear. So I immediately deduce. And this is why I said I had a roadblock. I hit a roadblock. Um, it's too cold here right now for this. I literally do not think that this should ever be worn in chilly or cold weather. It just disappears, at least on me and to my nose. So, I, you know, after playing around with that and realizing that I wasn't going to win with these daily wears because it doesn't last on my clothes, it doesn't last on my skin. This is the only one of these flankers that has really no life, no projection, no sillage, no scent bubble outside of 30 minutes to an hour. And I do not rock with fragrances that don't last like that. So I will have to come back to you guys in the spring or summer when it really gets warm here to see what this does. So I reserve judgment. I am not telling anyone to go out and buy this just yet because it doesn't perform well enough for me. So, hmm. There's twists to this once it gets onto your skin. It does not stay identical or, you know, really, really close smelling to the Floral or the EDP or the EDT anymore. It really has different parts and then it does its own thing. So I will say the pear is not the star in this. This, you know, pear in the top, I almost want to call it bull crap because this pear comes alive for me on pulse points only and when it's really, 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 really warm. For me, I would have loved to have smelled a glacial pear in this. Almost as if you took the perfectly ripe pear that is super juicy and put it in the freezer, came out, chopped it up, and then ate it that way. You know, like it's cold, super, super cold. But try that at home and smell it. You'll smell the difference between room temperature or freshly picked off a tree and when you make it cold, I would have loved an Arctic type of glacial pear in this fragrance. Um, if this would have been released in the fall, I would have loved to see more of the DNA of the intense with a spiced pear, kind of like the one that's in Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Belle. That would have been perfect too. But for this time of year, I think we needed a cold pear. We needed something that was going to be striking 
and different. This pair dies without the citruses and the peony. The only reason it shows up at all is because the peony, that beautiful, sweet peony, by the way, peony is probably my favorite floral note of all time. Um, I do love a lot of other ones, you know, orange blossom, ylang ylang, but peony is just, uh, it's so pretty and it's so sweet. The peony along with the citruses help bring the pear out. It is still a very light player, but I'm telling you, the hotter that you are, the better the pear performs. So if you live somewhere that's not, it doesn't really get that hot, you probably won't be acquainted very well with the pear. You know, it really, there is really a strong presence of something that smells very rose-like, very rose-like. And I do know that sometimes you can mix sandalwood, white musk, and peony and get that vibe. I don't know how it does it, but I've seen those three things in several perfumes and I feel like I'm smelling rose when it's nowhere to be found on the um, note list. So it's a beautiful floral and I get why they're calling it. I still don't get the sparkling part. I'm going to need, I can't. But when they say sparkling bouquet, I think it's what they're talking about. I think the jasmine and the peony and the sandalwood and the white must do a little something that almost make you feel like you are smelling some type of really pretty floral bouquet. However, nothing about this is sparkling or effervescent. It's a perfume that's pretty. It's going to be jasmine heavy um, more than any other floral when you're just spraying it on your clothes and you yourself are just putting it on. As you heat up, the peony starts to shine. So, Guys, I, you know, again, I'm reserving judgment. Um, I'm not trying to be too harsh. I am not saying yes or no. I am saying that I would not pick this flanker over any of the other ones except Bloom of Rose EDT. But I really need to test this one out more before I can be definitive. I will say that if someone told me right now, you have to choose, I would not choose this one because it just doesn't wow me enough. It doesn't deserve to be called a flanker. Um, I think that for all intents and purposes, we could have been done with this line. We could be moving on to something new with the House of Guerlain. But again, I do really enjoy it when I'm working out and I'm wearing it. I do really enjoy what it does on my post points when they heat up. Right now, it's pretty. It is. But it's like a jasmine perfume. I have... 70 of those, you know, not really, but plenty of those that this isn't one that I'm going to reach for before any of those. So I hope this helps um, for anyone who's looking to wait on it a little bit until it warms up. Do that because the price might also be cheaper as well. You might be able to find a sale or something, maybe for Mother's Day, maybe for um, Labor Day or Memorial Day or something. This is not one I would rush. I just wouldn't. So Thank you for spending this time with me, guys, and thank you for being patient and giving me a chance to wear it. I'm happy I could come to you a little sooner than I thought with my little breakthrough experiment that was unintentional. But hey, I guess this is meant for the heat, the true heat. <laughs> so if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Please click the like button and select the notification bell so that you never miss any of my future uploads. I enjoy spending time with you guys. If you have any other specific questions for me about any of these, I did do a video on all of the anchors, the first seven. I will put that card up here uh, somewhere. Also, if you have any questions about this one, like if you, I don't know what I couldn't have possibly answered, but if you can come up with something and you want to know, hit me up in the comments and I'll answer to the best of my ability. I have really spent time with this and I'm going to continue to. I can't wait for it to warm up just for the sake of it warming up and also so I can play with this one. As always, guys, you know I love to talk to you in the comments. And until then...